before I start this video, it will be a mommy topic for the most part. Um, it's just going to be like a lot of random thoughts, but for the most part, it's mommy topics. But before I lose the non-mommies, I just want to let y'all know that nobody is sleep on y'all. It's just that this is a part of my journey and I'm about to give birth. So I am talking a lot about mommy talk. But something that I do want to share is before I actually became a mommy, I felt so slept on because I felt like mommies get all the attention. Like in college, you can be um, independent technically and still not be eligible to get like financial aid with your own income. But all you had to do was be a mommy and then boom, you can, you know, you get approved for all the grants, you get financial aid because you have a kid. Same thing with like relationships. I felt like the real relationships lasted with the people that had kids and their excuse was because they had kids together so I just always felt like the mommies were always like put up here then especially like if you have those mommy friends that are like you don't understand you don't have kids but I want to let y'all know that y'all are bomb as hell <laughs> if you have kids if you don't like we're all bomb I don't want y'all to think that I'm just mommy 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 and you're only amazing if you're a mommy and mommies are so important because that's not what I think at all it's just this is the life that I've created for myself so I'm learning to fall in love with every aspect of it but the only reason why I'm so intensive with the mommy content right now is because I'm about to be mommy of two and it's like new to me and it's exciting. So I hope that I'm creating like relatable content to where even non-mommies could be like, oh, I like her. Like, I like what she's talking about. Or, you know, when I do become a mommy like that, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't stand when I, before I was a mommy, like people that will always be like, moms are the best and it feels so great to be a mom and you don't, you don't fit in if you're not a mom because that's not the vibes over here. It's just, this is the season that I'm in so a lot of it is like shocking for me and then like my last relationship was really toxic and it took a lot of my enjoyment and like investment in being a mommy away so now it's like literally i know reagan's 15 months but i feel like how i should have been feeling when she was first here but now i have all of my attention to all of this so it's like i'm you know and then i have a new baby coming so i just wanted to put that disclaimer out there this will die down but it's just the excitement of everything and like actually having the time and the mental capacity to focus on being a mommy and not trying to focus on everything else but being a mommy okay cool so i did make me some tea and this is peach ginger and honey um let me see if it is right oh it's perfect but it's too hot and now i just took a little spiritual shower and i'm going to i have my diffuser i'm going to put some some water in my diffuser And then I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of chamomile. What chamomile does spiritually is um, I've been having a lot of um, crazy dreams. It just kind of wards that type of stuff off. And um, it also brings like comfort, enlightenment in. Um, let me Google because I be knowing, but, you know, I be wanting to give y'all the real. Okay, so it brings inner peace and contentment and calms all sense of threatening or fear. Chamomile may inspire confidence and open the heart to expression, love, and compassion. And y'all know that's all that I'm about. Um, I also um, did like a spiritual cleanse on my house today, a spiritual floor wash and everything. So just bringing in the vibes. Like I want this environment to be like girl, gang, cave, happy, like just love and light. So we are going to start the diffuser. There we go. I don't know if y'all can see. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> so we're gonna uh, put the diffuser down. And that was really affordable. I can't remember exactly how much it was, but it's in my Target haul. Um, it had to be like less than $20 or like $19.99 at the, at the most. After my showers, I like to spray chamomile hydrazol on. So the chamomile hydrazol, not only does it do all the stuff that I just told you, chamomile attracts that love and that comfort and that peace however it also um is very good for like open wounds it's very good for um ear 
irritable skin it's very good for sensitive skin and calming that skin and then i have some raw shea butter random mommy thought number one this morning me and reagan were just sitting here chilling the power kept going in and out today and you know what she did she sat up here i brought all her toys up in here so she get out my face and she ignored every single toy and played with an empty water bottle and was so loud with it and so happy and i just wish that i would have knew that before i went and bought all these toys like <laughs> kids they're really simple and they like appreciate the smallest stuff so that's random mommy thought number one <laughs> okay random mommy thought number two I don't know if this turns you off, but but I do not like when men ask about my children. Like, I just feel like, personally, if you're interested in me, you're interested in me. And I feel like eventually you be, you become so interested in me that you care about my offspring. But men that just approach me on some like, oh, your kids are beautiful, you're weird. Or um, asking me about my kids or, you know, like I just, I personally feel like, one, you either being strategic as hell and trying to use the things that are closest to me and show that you care or you care about those things to try to get at me, which is like psychological and you're probably a narcissist. Like, <laughs> Or I just feel like it's overstepping boundaries. Like at the end of the day, my kids are not your concern. You don't even know if you like me yet. So why bring the kids in it? That's a red flag. When somebody seeks you and they like tell you that, Oh, my daughter needs a mom or my son need a daddy or whatever like I don't feel like that's normal you know I feel like eventually you get there but when you're still learning a person like the kids just they too innocent to be involved in all of that because I played that role or whatever and even to me it was just kind of weird how fast stuff was moving but I never questioned it because of you know what I was told but I still feel like don't ask me nothing about my kid. I don't know. It, that's weird to me. And then while we speaking about niggas, let's talk about how weird niggas are just in general. Earlier today, this um dude, he decided to tell me that I need to humble myself because I wasn't responding to him. I don't have to fucking respond to you, but he basically told me that I need to humble myself and I blocked his ass because... Who are you? Like, men feel so entitled. Um, I posted a picture on Snapchat today. I never really post on Snapchat. I used to be like a Snapchat fanatic, but since 2016, I've just like put random stuff on Snapchat. And it was about six guys who constantly, every time I post something on Snapchat, they always respond. But you got the one that's like, them, I'm them kids, daddy, which is disrespectful as hell to me. Like, I don't care where me and my child's father stands. It's like, why are you concerned about my kids? And why are you speaking on them? And why are you speaking? That just bothers me. Then you have the one that send the hard eyes and you don't respond. And then they um, send the, you see how you do me? And it's just giving hella scrubbish and codependent. Like, what do you want from me? Like, what, what, you know what I'm saying? And then it was this guy that I was talking to, um, you know, we just kind of kicked it on, well, kicked it, kicked it, virtually kicked it on Messenger. And he was really sweet. And we were talking about, um, he was just asking me a lot about myself. And he was telling me that, you know, he watched my YouTube videos, this, that, and the third. We was chopping it up. And then it got weird. He started to introduce his kids, like, um, not personally to me, but, you know, talking about them, which is like, I'm trying to get to know you. I don't, I don't even know if I want to care about your kids. I'm sorry to say it like that, but I'm trying to get to know you. Like, ain't we just chopping it up? This is like friendly way. He started to ask me about me and my child's father. And I just feel like that is still too weird messaging on Facebook. This is a lot. I never gave out my number to him, but he hit me with the randomly. And I kid y'all not, this was just casual conversations and good mornings and where are you from and I, what pushed you into spirituality type of conversation, just cool conversation. And he hit me with the, I, I would love to be there for the birth of your child. Mm, maybe I'm being petty because I just burnt the hell out my throat. <laughs> Like, 
it just shook me and you know for at first it was kind of like I was like well you know I just kind of brush it to the side and continue to communicate but probably after like day two of that communication I was like no he's giving codependent to me like because I think right after that it was a um I woke up thinking about you and it's just like you haven't heard my voice we've been on messenger on facebook messenger this is a bit much this is a bit much i'm y'all i'm really scared today like i know that love is coming and all of that but it's like i'm not even concerned about that shit at this point i'm just like whatever comes and is real and is meant for me i'm just gonna be able to notice it and i'm gonna just fall into it but all of this forceful entry and these codependent ass niggas and everything else like i just i'm not interested at all <laughs> i'm trying to build stability i'm trying to um prepare for a child you know i'm trying to do it without asking nobody for nothing so i just feel like a man that really sees me for what i'm on they would respect that and they would kind of just fall back and just take it easy until, you know what I'm saying, time permits. But these um, breastfeeding boobs are giving me life. <laughs> but yeah, like I'm just, you know, I'm cool on the dating thing right now. I'm just not even, every time I get a message from a, a man, it's just like, what do you want? Anyways, that also dives me into the topic of, you know, the, um, what is it, the OTF? little doo doo little doo doo or whatever his name is they just got caught up the girl um whose boyfriend was sticking screws up her child's anus you cannot just leave your kid with anybody and i know like you're in a relationship so you trust certain people but at the end of the day no like you never know what people are doing with your kids some people don't know that they sick until they in that situation. You know what I'm saying? Like some people really will be changing a baby girl's diaper and then be like, hmm, and then get curious and you're not there and that baby can't protect themselves and people just be sick. They just be sick and you don't know until you know. You know what I'm saying? Kids are so innocent and all you have to do is expose them to one thing, one incident, one time. And it, it really like, impedes on them emotionally and mentally and everything moving forward you know that's something that now this little boy has to heal from you know what i'm saying um so men get curious and a lot of these men are unhealed and they they have no spiritual connection or no fear of anything you know like a lot of people don't believe in higher beings or higher powers or god no more a lot of people aren't connected they're just zombies that have been successfully programmed and all they care about is materialistic things and they got you know sexual sexually transmitted demons and you just you know you know what i'm saying like i just don't know it just it bothered me it really bothered me to hear that story anyways that's a bit dark so we're gonna move forward another random mommy thought i cannot stand when like people act like my baby's hair has to be in ponytails or has to be like you know put up for her to be pretty like you know one day my granddaddy he was like oh you need to do something to her hair and my thing is my baby is a baby at the end of the day i'm not trying to strain her hair i do want to stretch it to train it but she's a baby and a lot of times we're just kicking it and cooling it and i don't want to build that hair that natural hair complex in her to where like it's been a point in time to where i felt like with my natural hair, literally, I wasn't cute at all. Like, because the texture, it wasn't like the natural that, you know, that other girls had. And it really, I went through a season to where I walked around with a puffball and no makeup on just so I could feel like, this is you. Like, you have to, this is, <laughs> what do you do? Because it literally was like, I had to wear a wig or I had to wear a weave or I had to manipulate my hair in some format. And I want my baby to feel beautiful regardless. Like, that is what grows out of her head. We have the type of hair to wear when you lay down, it's going to take shape of whatever you lay down on. And do I mean do, that I want her to walk out the house ungroomed and unkept? No. However, when she's a child, I want her to be able to lay around. And if we want to stay in the house for 
for a few days or if it's a pandemic and we don't want to do nothing and I want my baby to be free and I have any tension pulling on her hair and still look in the mirror and love herself, then what is wrong? What is wrong? Her hair doesn't have to be pulled and manipulated for her to feel beautiful or to be beautiful. And I'm not going to plant that and implant that in her mind. Like right now, I was supposed to do her hair today, but I'm not rushing to do her hair. We've been playing. She's been chilling. Like when I do her hair, I'm going to do her hair. I don't want my baby to be shamed of her natural hair. There's nothing to hide. A lot of people act like your baby, if they hair not wavy or coily or whatever, like her hair is. And I'm, I'm actually still learning how to take care of natural hair, how to... Um, like I worked for a natural hair company, which I got a story time coming up for that because my boss was a perv, but it was a great experience. It was an internship that I ended up dropping, um, because he was a perv. Um, but in that I did learn a lot about manipulating natural hair and how to get it to fall. It just takes consistency. They shame blue ivy and blue ivy wasn't doing all that rah-rah and pulling intention to her hair and now she has healthy beautiful hair and it could be silked out she could wear it up wherever like and that's how i want reagan to be i want well that's how i want both of my babies to be i want them to be able to go through their stages and then i feel like once your natural hair gets to a certain length and you're able to manipulate it in certain ways like there's no limitations, but we all have that stage where our hair is like, you know, when we do the big chop, it ain't exactly where we want it to be and what we want it to look like. But as it gets longer and as it gets, it becomes trained, it becomes more of what we, you know, envision. But you're not going to play my baby like if her hair don't have no damn rubber bands and barrettes in it, that she's not cute. Because she is. Okay. <laughs> Another one, I still firmly believe in kids staying in kids places, like children staying in children's places. That is something that I am so firm on. I believe that kids are innocent and we expose them to a lot of things. Now, I do something that I will do different is if my child wants to know why she can't do something or um, why something is wrong or why she's getting punished for something, I want her to be able to ask me now it is a way that she'll ask I don't want her questioning adults like you know what I'm saying but I want her to I don't want to just no you can't do that and leave her pondering and seeking the world for advice I want her to be able to say well mommy you always say that I can't do this but why you know like you I want her to have that ability to be fluent in communication with me to where we can discuss certain things so it's you know it's almost like I feel like with us, like the Bible, like I feel like it's a lot of things that you're not supposed to do. But if you're not led into that, it's just you reading a rule and then fearing it and then not doing it because you fear that thing versus you being led to not do something and being convicted about it and knowing kind of like why you shouldn't do that thing. So I don't want to like use scare tactics or just fear her into doing what I want her to do. I want to be able to communicate with her, but I want my child to stay in a child's place. Like if we all at the table with as, as adults, with our solo cuts, you don't need to be in here, period, period. <laughs> like I still believe in a child's place. If an adult is doing something, you don't ask them, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a fine line between asking about certain things and then it's a fine line between, like, questioning an adult, like, out of being grown. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hope that makes sense. But I feel like some kids, is no really boundaries and they're just technically an adult. They can say whatever or, you know, I was that kid that when I walked into the function, it's all adults. Okay, I'm going to the kids' room. I'm sitting at the kids' table. I'm doing, you know? Um, but as far as rules and structure and things like that, if she have a question on why we do certain things and what's the origin behind certain things, of course, I want her to know. I don't want to just like be a dictator and be like, oh, you can't do this. You know, random mommy fact. I hate feeding kids. Not that, you know, don't call CPS on me. But what I mean by that is like when I cook, I love to make things that my baby can hold. I cannot stand sitting at the table and feed. Kids are so frustrating when it comes to feeding them. 
like they just sit there and Reagan like to walk in a circle and do everything so I typically like to like do especially for breakfast when I'm still like sleepy I like to do things that she could pretty much hold on her own so like if we could do french toast or um if uh the like the squeeze packets and stuff like that and i know not all the time but i'm really quick to give her stuff that she could hold because eating time and feeding them it'd be so annoying they want to do everything but sit there and open their mouth <laughs> like just a fun fact okay and then this is something else that i felt like should be mentioned in this video so as y'all know i'm a kitchen stylist i work from home um <laughs> and a lot of people sit there and they're like, how do you get Reagan to just sit there and to just listen and to just, how do you do that? I'm not saying Reagan perfect because she do trip sometimes. Like, especially if it's one of my like clients that we know, know, and she wants to get out and play and talk. Um, yeah, she'll be like, <laughs> or whatever. But for the most part, like she's been like a really good baby and she allows me to work. And people always ask me how... I get her to do that and my thing is I personally feel like our kids didn't ask to be here right we always hear that so we're always taught to adapt to our children but I also feel like you know our children just in a survival mode like they have to adapt to the art their situations as well the same way that we adapt to our children they can adapt to us um it's almost like asking a vegan how do you get your kids to only eat vegetables and non-animal products and it's like what are their kids gonna what are what are the kids gonna do walk to heb and demand that they get animal products and meat products no the kids can only do really what you allow them to do so what i mean by that is you i don't just sit her in there and say well mommy has to do hair and you just gotta sit here but she accommodates to me and i accommodate to her meaning that I have my schedule to where every appointment is three hours apart. Typically, it only takes me an hour, 30 minutes to two hours to do an appointment. So that leaves me with the hour to an hour, 30 minutes to bond with her, to, you know, to feed her, to in between appointments so that I can spend that nurturing time with her. And then during appointments, I know what she likes. I know what shows she likes. I know what snacks. I told y'all I like her to stand up and be able to hold her own food so that she can eat and things of that nature. And I've kind of taught her a little bit earlier how to feed herself certain things. So when I am doing, you know, hair, or if I am working on a wig or whatever I'm doing, she doesn't feel like, okay, mommy's totally neglecting me. You know, I'm, I prepare her for the environment that we have in this household. Like some parents are complete stay at home moms and their kids can run around all day and that's great for them. But, um, with my situation and our environment, I know kind of how I have to operate. And I not only know it and enforce it, but I make it in a way to where it accommodates her to where she doesn't feel like, okay, mommy's forgot about me or okay, mommy's been over there all day. She kind of knows, you know what I'm saying? And now it's to the point to where when I do do hair, she kind of knows about what time I'm going to be finished or <laughs> like sometimes Reagan gets hyped like at the end of the appointment, like I know you're going to be done. So it's just like our kids accommodate to us. I feel like we have to start putting so much pressure on ourselves to be like these perfect ideal parents and know that the same way that we make shit happen for them they get it and they will you know for us as well the same way as like when I got her out of the bed like I got her out of the bed early and I'll start putting her in her playpen Reagan was sleeping in a swing like it was um I can't say it's usually difficult for the first two weeks because you're kind of like normalizing that routine you're kind of breaking them out of um a habit and pushing them into a new one so um i remember oh my gosh like when i was putting her in the playpen um to sleep it was so hectic because she would just cry and cry and cry and cry and cry and cry and i'm like oh my gosh i gotta get my baby but now it's to the point to where i could literally take her, put her in the playpen, put her in the bed, and she will sit in there, even if it's an hour, she won't cry. She'll just sit in there kind of playing with her feet and then she'll go to sleep, you know? So it's kind of just being firm in what you want from your child 
and then you know what I'm saying pushing forward from there but our kids adapt to us the same way that we adapt to our children like I said I make sure that I could feed her and play with her during breaks I make sure that I do create break times you know so it's not just like me going hard all day all day all day all day all day all day and then at the end of the day being like hey baby so we have that interaction time then she has her eating time so it's really just like in the meantime she's just in the space you know and she has her toys i put out her favorite toys and um you know things like that and then one thing too i always allow her to whine like i do not cater to reagan when she's whining at all so she doesn't really do it as much anymore um but if reagan wants to whine about something i strategically wait until she's done whining to go tend to her so she knows that whining does not get me my way period and it works. It really does work. Because nine times out of ten, it's fake wands. It's no tears for real. You know what I'm saying? But I'm really, I don't want to say I'm really hard on her. But I just want my baby to, you know, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like if Reagan falls, I don't run to her when she falls. I kind of, I feel like when you run to kids when they fall, it kind of makes them panic. You know, and then sometimes it embarrasses them. Or it makes them overthink the the situation and so a lot of the times like the yesterday um we went to the park and she fell and it was these two ladies they were like oh my gosh and i was like no she's okay she's fine and i watched her get up and then when she got up i was like mommy so proud of you and it just teaches her that you fall down but you get back up and you stand firm and you good like you're you're fine and i feel like it's important to do that to kids like i, I really feel like she gonna have tough skin you know what i'm saying but um i really think that that is important i want her to know literally and metaphorically like when you fall down you get your ass back up and then mommy got you you know what i'm saying but you gotta get up sit, sitting there and just laying there or crying because you fell or being shy because you made a mistake it's not an option we're gonna get up and then mommy got your back you know what i'm saying but that is that like that's something that i want her to know like in a literal sense and metaphorically so yeah but those are like my i don't know if i want to say unfavorable mommy tips but or not even mommy tips those are like my unfavorable mommy thoughts you know <laughs> Like, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. But this is ready for me now. So, here we go. I guess I'll do a little bit of sound bowl energy for us to close us out. I really like this. I really like this. I know a lot of people don't agree with, like, certain things that I do. And that's fine. But I feel like God gave my child me because it's it was needed and vice versa so i think that the way that i think about things it is for my child he wouldn't have gave her me you know what i'm saying and the same thing like i learn a lot through my child and i feel like it's a reason why at a specific y'all it's really hard to get pregnant like when you really look at the science like for one sperm to touch that one egg and for that egg to be free during that time and it, the implantation and everything like it, it even though a lot of people get pregnant like this it's it's a process and so for God to give you and to select that certain seed and give it to you at a certain point in your life like I really feel like it's destiny and that is the reason why I don't believe in abortion um I don't you know and I, I done took my friends to go get theirs <laughs> Um, so it's no judgment but just personally like my outlook on it is I just I just feel like these babies are innocent and they serve purposes and that you know like my babies have healed me literally like they I needed them and you know the same way that they need me to be strong for them and that is why I chose to heal and that is why we're good and we're gonna be great and everything but um dang why was I saying that but I feel like the traits and the attributes that are within me um, are needed for her development. So although other people may not agree with my parenting or agree with the, my certain logic behind things, my baby, obviously, like, she, she's flourishing with it. Like, she be walking around smiling and happy and, you know, she's not damaged or anything. So 
<laughs> so it works for us and that's all that matters okay so i'm gonna close out with the singing bowl and i'm also gonna journal tonight now remember when you use a singing bowl there is not much that you have to do you just meditate and it's so much easier to not do it on camera because on camera you're so like conscious of how you look and should i close my eyes or should i keep them open and this that, and the third but at the end of the day it's all about just focusing and the sound is healing it really br produces healing vibes and healing energy you know what i'm saying I was getting too much into it okay so i hope y'all enjoyed that little snippet with the singing bowl and if you want to go back you can just play it and just you know speak positivity over your life um i am beautiful i am strong or i release this this that and a third or i will attract money and da -da 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 -da. whatever you feel led to do just go back and replay that little part and just speak over yourself you know what i'm saying oh yeah and if you don't have a singing bowl Look, I sell them so you can always buy one from me. But another alternative is to just play frequency music. Um, if you search frequency music for success or frequency music for protection or frequency music for um, guidance or frequency music for fertility, whatever you can think of um you can always play that and go to sleep with it on and just manifest that way or think that way or cleanse that way or release that way or manifest that way so um that is also something that's super helpful it's the vibrations in the bowl for me and then just the habit of actually using the bowl it makes me take out the time to actually put it in my routine for the day but you could do the same thing with frequency music so that's just a little gem right there but i hope y'all um enjoyed my little unpopular mommy opinions or topics or whatever it may be and i'm gonna edit this thing and try to get it uploaded tonight for y'all okay i love y'all so much i pray positive vibes on you guys and um like i said it's not just mommy content forever but this is where i am right now and i'm just so happy and so grateful that god is like i'm like just not where i was last year and it's just it means the world to me and um i just see my my healing actually doing something for me <laughs> so um yes y'all these mommy boobs are everything right now i'm so excited about those <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i love y'all for real and i hope that y'all enjoy this please drop your comments below even if you don't agree with exactly what i you know agree with or what i'm promoting or what i'm you know what i feel i would love to know your thoughts so let me know down below make sure you like comment and subscribe and i will see y'all in the next video bye y'all